Hey there, my brothers and sisters, Joe Wood, the author and speaker here. And I just wanted to quickly address the uh, recent tweets from former Hillsong worship leader, Marty Sampson. I thought that they uh, they they really warranted a, a very frank discussion about what's going on in the body. And I was sent several articles involving his, his tweets very interesting it was about his renunciation of Christ and his walk back of that and all these other things that are that he he stated let me let me say this that he is obviously hurt he's dealing with some injuries he's seen some things and some of the statements that he's made do warrant an answer uh, I think that I am beyond the point where we just say, well, we're just going to pray for the brother and then we kind of move on. And no one really addresses the thing. We said, well, you just got to believe. And yes, faith, uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. At the same time, we've got to be able to offer answers to individuals. The scripture says to be ready to defend the faith at all times. That's what the scripture says. Okay. So, uh, we need to be able to explain, offer some apologetics as to why we believe what we believe. All right. And he brought up some, he also brought up some points within his tweet that uh, are, are, are factual. We cannot continue to just, uh, to just avoid dealing with some of the issues that have been going on because what we're seeing is more people are being hurt. And they're disappointed and they're disenfranchised because we will not or we refuse to openly address issues, to be honest and to be transparent with people. OK, transparency is important in the body of Christ. Honesty is important in the body of, of Christ. And so we need to we're going to touch on a few issues. I'm not going to get into a deep theological discussion. I don't have the time for that. Uh, but I think it's, it does warrant uh, a discussion. It does warrant conversation. Okay. And so I'm praying for the brother. I hope you're praying for him as well, that he will make Jesus the center of his journey. Because as long as, long as Jesus is the center of your journey and you allow your life to orbit around that, you will not go off track. When you don't do that, you get caught up in everything that's going on in life and looking at the world around you and focused on the world around you you're going to find yourself in a mess. And that's just how it is. So let's deal with some, some points that he made. The first thing that he, one of the points that he made, I should say, was that leaders fall and no one says anything. Can't argue with that. That's just, that's just the truth. I know it's a generalized statement, but far too often we see this happen and no one says anything. No one addresses it. There's no repentance or restoration. Well, why is this occurring? Because the mistake that we've made too often is we make people the center of our, of our universe rather than Jesus the center of our universe. We put people in the place of God in our lives rather than allowing God to be God. Now, I'm going to say this about leadership. We honor leadership. We respect leadership. We support leadership. We pray for leadership. We build leadership up. We serve uh, the needs of leadership, but leadership was never become God in your life. Why? Because people are fallible. They make mistakes. They have shortcomings. Okay. And when you place a person as God in your life, rather than allowing God to be God, you're going to be disappointed and you're going to end up hurt. Period. They are going to do something, say something, no matter how big or small it is. You're going to do something or say something that's going to make you question your faith. Not only in the individual, but your faith in God, because you put them in a place that they have no business being. Let God be God and let people be people. Keep God as the head of your life and you will be able to stand through the storms. Now, Leaders also need to have the ability and the safety to say, these are my failings. These are my faults. And as, as congregants, we have to hold leadership accountable. 
can't say what well, that you know that's the pastor, so we're not going to say anything. No, that pastor is responsible to you, the congregant. They're accountable to their family, and they're accountable to God. And so you've got to hold their feet to the fire just as much as you would anyone else. If they're teaching incorrect doctrine, if they're living lives that are backwards and ungodly, you've got to hold them accountable. Why? Because they're not God, and they're supposed to be, but they're supposed to be representatives, ambassadors of the kingdom. And so you never allow a person, no matter who it is, to become God in your life. Leaders have to be restored. They have to be a path for reconciliation and restoration. What well, this thing about hiding stuff and sweeping it under the carpet is wrong and it is unbiblical and it's causing a lot of hurt. I wrote a book uh, years ago called Return Home Wounded Warriors to Church is You. And in that book, I address some of those very issues about the improper placement of leaders in our lives. where we put them and make them gods rather than honoring them as the people of God. And we should honor them. We should respect them. But they are not God. And when we do that, you're destined for hurt and you're destined to fall yourself. OK, the other thing that he talked about was uh, that, you know, signs and wonders. We don't see the signs and the wonders. Well, there's a particular passage in Scripture when uh, the, the Scripture talks about a, a boy that had a, 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 a spirit in him. And he was falling out in the fire and the disciples came and they prayed over the boy in this town and nothing happened. And then scripture says that they were embarrassed. OK, Jesus comes down from the mountain. He prays for the boy. Boom. Spirit is gone. OK, the disciples were embarrassed. They didn't want to ask him what they did wrong in public, but they went to the house and they said, Lord, what did we do wrong? And Jesus said that these things come by fasting and praying, fasting and praying. We've got to get back to basic biblical tenets, fasting and praying. We're so caught up in everything else that's going on in our lives that prayer has become an afterthought. Church is almost an anesthetic to, rather, to us dealing with our issues. And so we've got to get back to some basic biblical uh, principles. Fasting, praying, and being in the Word. I know the Holy Spirit is with you. and He goes with you every single day. He walks with you. He talks with you. But you better be in the word. There's so much that's going on in the world around you that if you're not in the word and you're not praying and you're not listening to God, you're going to be caught up and you're going to be confused and you're not going to know which way to go. And you're just going to be like another one of these individuals walking around saying he's, he or she is a Christian, but you're going to have no power and no authority or you will not know how to exercise that power and authority. you got to get in the word. You need to be praying. And you need to be spending time with other believers, okay? There's some other points that he uh, addressed. I don't have time to get into today, but we can no longer listen to the cry of those who are hurt. Listen to the cries of those who are disappointed and disenfranchised and just say, well, another one bites the dust. We'll get another one in here. That's not the heart of the shepherd. And that's not the heart of a person who really loves God. If you really love God, you love people, and you're concerned about people's welfare, and you want to see the best for people, and you're going to extend yourself as much as God shows you to, to ensure that that person has a right relationship with him. And so we treat people as expendable rather than loving them with the love of God. And so I thought this was a, a great way to get this conversation started. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts and your opinions, particularly about those tweets. There's nothing that he said outside of his renunciation. A lot of the things that he said were true. A lot of the points he made were accurate. We've got to, the, the, church, has got, the church has got some, uh, some ground to make up. There's some things that we need to get in order. We've got to get our house in order and we're, coming upon some very dark times and people are going to be coming to our houses of worship. We need to be ready to receive them. We need to be ready to serve them and to honor them and to show them God's love. But we can't have all these shenanigans going on and think that God is going to honor us. That's just not how it works. We want to see the signs, the wonders, the miracles, and we want to walk in honor and integrity and with good character. So I'm interested in hearing your thoughts. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. Look forward to hearing from you.